Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. It's just after Christmas and I'm off for a ride with my friend Danny from Ipswich. I wasn't planning on filming, but Danny's had such an interesting past year with different bikes that I really wanted to get him out on his brand new adventure bike side by side with my Bonneville because you've gone from a bobber to a cruiser and then you got an adventure bike. I came with you looking at the adventure bike and you said after you'd got it, it was just a revelation. Yeah. Tell me about, just give a brief overview, the history of your bikes, why you sold one of your bikes and how you've moved on to this and why you like this one so much. Because before I pass it to Danny, my aim for this, this video today, I really want to see, and I promise, I promise I'm open-minded here, can I be sold on the dream of an adventure bike? So give us an overview, Danny. Yeah, yeah, so so I think the, the first bit of information is, is probably um, I'm quite a new rider. So so you know I set out this year with the goal of of getting my license, uh, getting out, getting a full license, and and getting into something that I talked about doing for such a long time, and uh, and it was probably in a post-COVID world that my wife and I said we need to stop talking about things and actually do them, um, which sort of kicked kickstarted me into action. Um, and so, and my, the bike I fell in love with was the uh, Bonneville Bobber uh, and, and went into my local dealership and I bought it uh, and before I'd got my license, before I was, had, had ever ridden a motorbike and I bought so it. So that was the dream bike, like you, that, get, yeah, yeah. you know, you do your test, just planning on having a dream bike, which actually couldn't be more different to this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was the dream. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, much, much like yourself, you know, I, 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 my, my romanticised vision almost of, of motorcycling was based on Sons of Anarchy, was based on um, you know, retro films, you know, yeah. the, you know, The Great Escape, etc. And, so, and, and, yeah, and, and I, I just fell in love with the machine itself. Um, I should say, you're six foot one. Yes. So as some people would say you're borderline, borderline, yes. although I, I may slightly disagree. Some say you're, you're borderline too tall for that. Well, and, and uh, on day one after passing my test, uh, I would 100% agree with them, and so, uh, I, so I, you know, after three, four months of of uh, going into the garage at night, making brum brum noises and pretending that I could take it out, you know, the day finally came. I passed. I took it out, and uh, and I remember seeing a video back. My my wife secretly filmed from the top window of our house, yeah. me pulling away from the driver for the first time on this bike, yeah. and uh, and I remember watching it, and and she sent it to me. She's like, surprise guy, and then watching it back and thinking. Oh my God, I'm way too big for this bike, you know. Like, I, I look like Bowser in Mario Kart, you know, in sort of this giant. Was it literally under. as easy as that? You saw the video and like, my God, I, I have I to sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it wasn't just that. I, I think there was the fit, but also um, the ride was yeah. um, incredibly unforgiving. Yeah. Um, and, and you're I think you're that, a, a bit heavier than me. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. found it just about, yeah. well, no, I found it okay, but you really did feel like you were too yeah, big yeah. for it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and, and, and that's an understatement. I've probably got 20 plus kilos on yourself. So yeah. uh, that is night and day when it comes to a monoshock setup on that. And, it's very interesting. And, and, and there, there are things you can do with aftermarket shocks, but I, I didn't want to start going down a world of spending thousands of pounds to try and turn it into something it wasn't, you know, and, and especially with the fit not quite being right as well. Yeah. Um, and so I thought, well, I need a bigger bike and the logical place to go was a Harley Davidson. Which is the first <laughs> bike I saw with you. And yeah, yeah. I remember when you first pulled up on that bike, that is, that's dream level bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just custom color tank. It was a Softail Slim. Yeah, yeah, 2019 um, Slim. Engine Burton. size. Oh, it was 1800, yeah. 1785, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. It's the, it was the um, Milwaukee 8 107. Yeah. How um, did you find that compared to the Triumph? Way so, bigger. Yeah, way bigger, way more torque. Um, it was all blood and thunder, you know. It, it yeah. was kind of it, it, huge amounts of theatre. Yeah. You know, I've got to say, that, that was a head-turning bike. I remember seeing it. 
people would stop and look at that bike. We, I mean, we, that's that level. Yeah, yeah. Of we, cool. we parked at Caffeine and Machine, didn't we? And, yeah. and there were you, you could yeah. see people like stopping and going, "Wow, you know." And and I think the custom paint was a big part of that as well. It had the Audi Nardo grey. Um, it was just yeah, yeah. stunning, wasn't it? And you yeah. did your own things to it. You had panniers on it. Yeah, it just yeah. looked the business. How do you go from <laughs> probably one of the coolest and Harleys I've ever seen to an adventure bike? So. Um, the key thing was actually um, being at a, a friend of mine's um, funeral um, up in the northwest, and he volunteered for the blood bikers. Yep. Moving from hospital yep. to donor banks or donor banks by the hospital, and it's all sorts of things, blood, platelets, yep. plasma, medical supplies, urgent medication, different things like that. Um, and he'd volunteered for them. Um, and, and it seemed like a, a, you know, an incredible organisation, an incredible charity. Also, he, as a friend, had done an awful lot for me in, in my earlier career. Uh, and I felt like, you know, what better way to kind of pay him back or, or, or him than to try and get involved in that. Um, and so I wanted to get involved, but I also felt like the Harley wasn't necessarily the bike to do it for on. moving blood around 365 days a year because yeah, your condition what and, you need in a bike is very different if you want you know yeah. a peacock to go out on a sunday yeah compared to if you need a, a genuinely usable bike to yeah. be going out at zero degrees in a december morning or yeah, something. Yeah. And, and and combined with that as well you know my my commute is 90 miles each way 95 miles each way and i'd found myself falling completely in love with biking yeah, i didn't want to take the car yeah. i wanted to take the bike but again, the Harley wasn't a commuter vehicle, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that was, yeah. um, it, it, it was, on, and on that long run, there were sharper knives yeah. that you could use, you know, yeah. for, for the job. And, and, and so I found myself more and more looking at more modern alternatives, mm -hmm. very much in the mindset that I'd run two bikes. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's when we made our trip to Orwell's in, in yeah. Ipswich. Yeah. Because you were planning to keep the Harley yep. and get a mid-priced adventure bike. Just five, as five k was the budget 5K. we went in yeah, as yeah. a winter hack, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. in essence, yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and go on. And what so, happened then? <laughs> what happened? So we spent the best part of what, a few hours in, you know, and we sort of started looking. There was a Tiger eight hundred, and there was a there was actually originally a BMW F eight hundred GT. It's a lovely bike. Really it's nice. Lovely it was bike. about five five and a half k panniers. Perfect for the job didn't do anything for me in terms of exciting me yeah. um, but we looked at the Tigers and then but these KTM's were there as well and and the more I was talking and, and, and we were kind of going round and round and, and we got to a place where it was like if we're going to do it do it properly and and uh, and and talked myself into a 2019 um, 1290 Super Adventure. Yeah, the, um, the one before this. Yes, the so generation you before this. Bought one before this, second yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah. Loved it so much, you decided to sell everything else yeah. and go for this. Yes, yeah, yeah. So uh, I found myself, you know, I loved the Harley with all my heart. I'd yeah. stare in the game to go, you know, what an incredible looking machine, what a great yeah. machine that, you know, the theatre, as I say, yeah. the emotion of riding yeah. it. Yeah and then walking away and getting on the KTM because it was the better tool for the job. So you ended um, up, you had the Harley in the garage, the KTM. Yeah. You stopped using yeah, yeah. the Harley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was, you know, it really felt like it was um, something that... <sighs> I, I, I swear by, you know, bikes, they're not, it's not a tea set from the Queen. It's not yeah. something that you should... Um, they need to be used, they yeah, need to yeah, be ridden, yeah. and yeah. I wasn't riding yeah. it. And, and, and whereas with the, with the adventure bikes, I felt yeah. like it didn't matter what the conditions were, what the yeah. time what it was, I could take it out and it would be, you know, it would be an effective tool for the job this ultimately. Perfect, on to the next stop. I'm going to grab the camera. Can you do a walk around? Because some yeah. of the things on this bike, radar guided or adaptive yeah. cruise control. Okay, let me get the camera, yeah, I'll yeah. film. Just give a walk around of this, Danny. Perfect. It's a 2022. Uh, third generation 1290 Super Adventure. Um, it is, it says 1300, 1301cc. I think it's, it's around between 160, 170 brake horsepower. Um, it's, this particular one is fully loaded with the, the tech pack. So um, all of the extras you get with that, like the advanced suspension, the quick shifter, the hill hold control, um, the advanced sort of traction control settings, the additional rider modes, like you get rally mode, street mode, sport mode, um, and then the, the, the radar cruise control as well. For ride mode, I mean, it's a bit damp out today, so we've had it in rain, which, yeah. which smooths off the throttle response, yep. Yep. stops you from doing anything too silly. Um, you can change it in terms of whether it's cruise control, whether it's the adaptive cruise control, and then you can set the distance at which it will follow. Wow. Um, wow. So how, how much it will let you close in before it starts to adjust the speed yep. for the vehicle yep. in front. 
um, it's incredible. Right? Again, when you commute, you know, my commute involves the M25, yep. uh, you know, big A roads, etc. Yep. Things like that become really useful. Again, you can set the preload adjusters, so you can um, you can set the overall ride height. And this is in the standard seat setting. Yeah. Um, yep. the, the, you can drop the seat lower. Okay. Um, this is the standard seat setting um, and standard preload. Yeah. And, and I'm virtually flat foot. I'm, and I I'm should say, like when we get it side by side, the Bonneville and the KTM, that is. It's fifty percent bigger, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah. I think it could uh, it could hide the Bonneville quite nicely. Um, okay, that that gives a good overview, Danny. Let's let's get onto the road. If if I am very good, very sensible and level-headed, maybe I'll just get just a tiny go on it. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. thank you so much. Okay, right. <laughs> we'll get on the road and let's see what these are like side by side. We've come out onto a huge, long straight, right in the middle of the countryside. This, I had no idea about this. We just pulled over to a little memorial here. This is one of the old American Air Force runways from built in 1942. So along here, old American Air Force runway from the Second World War. Memorial in front of us. Another runway you can see right ahead. This is the second runway and the third runway is somewhere behind the hedges here. I found it fascinating because I had no idea this area existed for one, but secondly, to stop the, um, the American Air Force getting homesick, I just found it so interesting, the different names that they called places. For example, they've got a Greenwich Village right here. They've got Alcatraz here, which must have been the prison for the, uh, the American naval personnel if they got into trouble. American Red Cross Club, and you still got, I think, the old barracks right in the distance there you can see bomb store and other things it's very very bleak out here I don't know if you can hear it with all the wind uh, with the microphone I've got the dead cat on but it's windy it's flat it's pretty bleak pulled over at the old American Air Base Danny you okay if I if I test out the KTM, I can trust you. Okay, we've got the we've got the runway right here. There's a quick shifter on yours. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. I've never knowingly used a quick shifter correctly. Is it as simple as just kick up, kick down? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Without so touching the clutch. What I found with it uh, is um, obviously you use the clutch to pull away. And then once you're in first and, and, and you're moving, when you're going up the gearbox, um, it's better to have some throttle yeah. applied what when you're changing yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have to be on the throttle yeah so have some throttle applied um not not full wrist yeah. but uh but have a bit applied uh and then flick up and it'll it'll match for you it'll, okay. it'll rev match for you and it'll be silky smooth coming down it's better if you've got no throttle applied so okay okay so okay. and then okay. it'll auto blip and again it'll rev match for you yeah. as you come back down okay um so that that's too fit if you if you don't do that sometimes it can give you a little a, a little jolt but yeah. but once you learn the technique yeah. of it you it's the most addictive thing well, ever. Do you know i can't wait because <laughs> i took the pan america out yeah so i've got a tiny bit of experience i'm very curious to see what this is like so yeah. this will only be the second adventure bike i've tried yeah. but 
No, I'm going to be honest. I was riding along thinking I caught everything with the Insta360. It turns out <laughs> it was dragging along the floor because I didn't tighten it. So I have to go out and get some more footage. Interestingly for me, Danny, how, what percentage were you going at? Were you at 80%, 90% while riding through those um, country lanes? 30. Yeah, I'm not joking. Yeah, I was yeah. at about 90%. Right, yeah. And you were still leaving me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I could tell that you weren't trying to ride fast. Yeah. And I really struggled keeping up with you. And you probably didn't even think you were going no, fast. No. And, and this, it, we're still running this in. Yeah, you know, I know. So this, I, this in the 600 mile run in. So, so sort of doing varied, but, but yeah. not pushing it. Yeah. And um, you look completely relaxed there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's the agility, I think. That's the, that's the biggest thing. I think coming from some of the modern classic bikes, yeah. cruisers, etc. Um, this handling, going through corners and things like that, you, your, your ability to maintain progress is, is so much um, so much better. And on wet, wet roads, leaves, Absolute you confidence. know, those country lanes, yeah, yeah. you look stable there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's just do a quick gear because your <laughs> gear's all changed. Yes. You know, since having the Harley and the Triumph, complete change. Yeah. First off, do you ever see wearing that stuff again? It, it's not going anywhere because yeah, okay. I, you know my heart will still I still think at some point there'll be a retro style sort of yeah. modern classic type bike yeah. I love the Z900 yeah. I, okay. I love okay. the Bonneville okay. you know, okay. so, so, so there'll, there'll still be a time for it yeah. but, so um, what have you got now just walk so us through it I, I, I feel I'm sponsored by Revit actually so, so <laughs> this is the hey, uh, I like this stuff I yeah like. yeah yeah it's Revit suit Revit boots um this is the, uh, I think it's the sand, uh, yeah. they call it H2O. Yeah. Um, so it uses the Hydrotex, um, which is their sort of level below Gore-Tex. Yeah. The Gore-Tex suits are big, big, big cash. Yeah. This wasn't cheap, but, yeah. it, but it's that level, level yeah. below. I, I found it works absolutely perfectly in terms of commuting, all weather conditions. Because you know. it doesn't look like you're ridiculously layered up there. No, no, no. I've got a t-shirt and a, a, a fleecy top. Yep. And then the jacket itself has got a removable thermal liner. Yep. Um, so at this time of year, but in summer, yep. again, you take that thermal liner out, you can, you've got like the vent pockets, which yeah, you can yeah. take and, and sort of take back, uh, the button back. Same on the trousers as well. So you can give yourself Carry more ventilation. Carry on talking, Danny. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, a real sort of four season kind of uh, gear. <laughs> and, and you've gone from open face Harley yeah, yeah. to a flip up to a modulate, with, yeah. with a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is it? Honestly, what's it like? So uh, it, is it now a revelation just like the bike is where you couldn't do without it? Yeah, it, it's it's the ease of use again. And I come back to everything's a juxtaposition. You know, like I, I love, you know, I, I was, as you know, I, I, I used to be a musician and, and, and love music. As much as I've got, uh, you know, 50s valve amplifiers, I've also got a Dolby Atmos speaker system, do you know what I mean? And, and it's that constant battle between form and function yeah. and, and kind of tradition and technology advancing. Yeah. Yeah. With, with the, with, again, with like the modular helmet and the flip face, you're stopping at a petrol station and, and especially if you're doing the blood biking and, and you know, your time is, is important, you know, not having to undo everything, flip the lid, go in, pay, you know, back out, back on the bike and off you, if you go, just that, that ease of, of life yeah. Is, is, yeah. Is, is great. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of the comms uh, in there, on the commute, um, just being able to have the radio or some music. And, and you can set your sat nav, helmet on, speak into the sat nav, set the sat nav, yeah, yeah. whatever you say, Siri, take me to X or Y. Exactly. And it's as easy as that. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? I've got the CarPlay um, unit on, on the bike. And so that uses Apple Maps or Google Maps or TomTom or Waze, whatever app you've got. Uh, yeah, and just, hey Siri, navigate to work or navigate to... Here, this there, is everywhere. the thing that struck me with this. Everything is seamless. Yeah. Everything's <laughs> easy. Everything makes sense. It's like a modern car. It's the closest thing I've seen to a modern car with everything that you get with it. And it's yeah. all so beautifully laid out. Yeah. You can do everything with ease, can't yeah, you? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all seamless. It's not complicated or difficult to change the suspension or set up, you know, uh, Google Maps to take you to X and Y. Turn on the heated seats, the heated grips. You've got full wind protection. Yeah. yeah. It's all easy. And and I think that, that that's probably if you come back to the whole, how did we end up here and, and this bike, being re honest with myself and realistic with myself as you know a dad with a couple of young kids, you know busy job, all, all these other things going on, it being easy to enable me to ride and and go and ride and ride as much as I can in as many different scenarios as I can, that's what it was all about. Yeah. I think ultimately and yeah. getting that to and and that's what the setups enabled. I think so. it facilitates more riding. Yeah. in essence. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs>
you can see, well, sunset over there. We've come to the end of the day. Just my thoughts, Danny, yeah, yeah. on the KTM, just riding it briefly, you know, with that quick shifter going up and down. Everything is so seamless. You feel cocooned with it. Your legs are, by and large, protected by the bulging engine at the bottom. Hands protected, body, of course. And it all works so well. And the fact that you were just saying, most of the, the fuel is situated down here. So yeah, they've yeah. actually kind of banked on the weight distribution of it. It's not unwieldy at all. No, no. It's beautifully yeah. easy to use. Everything, I think Quick Shifter took me about 30 seconds yeah. to be able to figure <laughs> out how to use. It's, yeah. It's a supreme machine. I think we're both going to agree. <laughs> this is an infinitely superior bike to the Harley, the Bobber, obviously my Bonneville. Infinitely superior. But the thing I'm curious about from your side, you've, you've left a Harley Davidson, you've left a Bobber. How do you feel about leaving, you know, the perceived soul, the character, the cool factor? What is it like in reality? Do you, do you have longing memories of those? Do you know you've made the right choice? Does ability outweigh soul, character and style? Yeah, it's a really interesting question and it is the biggest battle I probably faced internally yeah. um, when making that decision. I think ultimately what it came down to for me is the, the, the adventure and the stories come from the ride not and 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 the bike is a facilitator it's a vessel for for getting to that place right and 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 almost the the harley the bobber the stunning things and they made you feel good and they made you feel good because you probably made other people feel good and going that you know that's a good looking bike it's a you know the retro styling the desirability and everything else is, is, you know is amazing um but it, you you weren't always there in terms of getting out on the road yeah. and going out, and you didn't necessarily always want to go further you know and it's you like what we say isn't it the best yeah. bike is the bike that you ride the most yeah yeah exactly and and i think i always on this machine want to go further you know i i, I don't want it to end yeah. i want to find an excuse to do another 200 miles yeah. another 300 miles at the one time i found that because i know exactly what you mean i had the harley davidson pan america in tenerife had it for three days and I went out for a quick Sunday morning ride and I was out for seven hours. Yeah, yeah. Seven hours, because I didn't want it to end. <laughs> and that's where, for me, the main battle is. The, the supreme ability of mm. these big adventure bikes versus, and I'm talking intangible stuff here, the, the perceived cool factor. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's personal preference, no more yeah, than yeah. that. These are so much better. I was out riding the Pan America more then I was out riding the Bonneville in one day. I don't think I've ever done just for the pure joy of it, by myself, no plans, seven hours riding. How do you feel about the perceived soul of it, the character? Do you feel like you miss that when you ride this? Well, that's, you know, if you go back to the time where I had, had the Harley and the 2019 Super Adventure, and I would go in the garage and I would admire and drool and stare and, and, and ha had love for the beauty of the Harley, and then I'd get on the KTM because that was the machine to go and ride on. And ultimately, that's why I then got rid of the Harley and the KTM just to get a brand new KTM. You, and I just have one machine that does everything. You sold a 2019 KTM, you sold a lovely Harley. Both of those gone just yeah. for this. That's how yeah. highly you rate this yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah. Would you, yeah. Okay, final one from you. Yeah. Could you ever see yourself going back to something like a new version of a Bonneville or Harley? Or now, yeah. are you so sold on this ability you could never go back? Does everything else feel just too inferior? I, th I think it would only be an addition. I, d I, I couldn't not have um, something as complete as this yeah. in, in the, you know, in, in the stable. And, I, and it's it's everything, right? It, it's the bike, it's its abilities, it's having the dealership on the doorstep, the way they look after yeah. it. Um, you know, all, all it's the whole package that, that kind of goes. It, it's complete. Just even just seeing you, Danny. We stopped off for Starbucks, <laughs> and you know, Danny's opening up his rear rear box two helmets in there both of them you head off you can set up your heated grips you're yeah. completely cocooned from everything more more so than i thought and i mean this 100 percent. i'm not just saying it <laughs> you've gone a long way to selling the dream for this I, yeah. I really mean it just seeing you whizzing along there in in absolute comfort but you still feel like you're exposed to the elements it doesn't i often wrongly think oh, it's not it's not biking you're not exposed yeah, yeah. to the elements as much but you still get all of that joy yeah, yeah. from riding it okay danny we'll end it there 
Thank so. you for well, thank you for letting me film this lovely KTM, and thank you for coming along because honestly, the stuff you don't see, we've been stopping about once every five minutes for <laughs> ride buys or drive buys, all of this nonsense. So, thank you, Danny. We're going to head back. The sun's about to set. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And Danny and I, well, I will see you in the next one, and hopefully, I'll get Danny back on sometime soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Danny. Cheers.